All right, guys, hands down, this was the best episode we've had. Phil Handy came on. Before we play that episode, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Prize Picks. I've been using Prize Picks for a couple years now. It's the easiest way to play daily fantasy. And what makes Prize Picks fun is you're placing entries on players, not teams. Prize Picks is legal in California, Texas, Florida, and many other US states. All first time users use my code LAID. It'll instantly double whatever you deposit. So let's say you put in $100 to start, Prize Picks will instantly put another $100 into your account. Again, code is LAID or you can click the link in my description. And like I said, I have a lot of fun using it. I've been using it for years. If you follow me, you've known that. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. Enjoy, guys. We're Welcome clever, to huh? The Late Show. We got a very, very special guest. The current assistant coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. He went to the finals six straight times, won three championships. That's impressive. One of the greatest <laughs> skills coaches of all time. Sure. Look at his resume. His name is Phil Handy. Coach Welcome Handy. to the Late Show, my man. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys, man. Appreciate it. You the, want a handle? Look him up. Appreciate the invite. Look him up. <laughs> if you're trying to get better, look him up. Uh, you went to the finals six straight times. Trying to be like you, dog. Nah, I almost, almost went there three times, but that's impressive. I tell you what, man. I don't even. But you, you know, yeah, Braun on those teams, right? LeBron yeah. Leader, right? I mean, hell, you've been there. Yeah. You know. Going to the finals, man, you, one, you have that to have a good hard. team. It's hard. People don't understand how hard it is to win in the NBA. Hard. But to go to the finals, not just the <coughs> talent, you got to have a little luck too. Yeah. Right? Something yeah. along the way in the playoffs has to happen. You need health. You got to have health. Mm -hmm. And I look back on that run, man, and it was just for me and my own personal journey. Um, <coughs> I, I even look at that and say it was incredible to be a part of that yeah. as a coach. Um, to be a part of some of the coaching staffs with some of the players had a chance to coach and then the preparation. Yeah. Again, you know the preparation, man, going into that is, is just, it's in depth, what you do to your body, what you do to your mind, yeah. uh, all the things that you have to do to prepare to try to compete for a championship. Yeah, you're you know, away from your loved ones. And, well, your, your teammates and your, become, your team become your family, really. Become your family, man. Yeah. That's a long grind, right? Right up. That's a long grind. So, man, it, it became like a, uh, became like an addiction. Yeah. You know, once you get there, man, you yeah, want Oh, yeah, you can't. Nothing else. You, you want to. don't settle for nothing else. You want to get back. You I can dig it. You want to get back, man. So that was been a great part of my, my career as a coach. 100%. And I feel like you you kind of created your own blueprint. Like, we got to back up a little bit. You you never even wanted, wanted to really be a coach like that, right? You you had your business. You're training players. You were, you were good. Correct. And then... It was Mike Brown, right? Correct. Reached out to you and was like, yo, we got this position. We got Kobe. It's like, just kind of speak about that. Like, you weren't in, that wasn't, that wasn't in the, in the, in the, in like the books for you. Yeah, when I retired, you know, I played 10 years professionally myself, uh, most of the time in Europe. But I re when I retired, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to impact a game of basketball in a way that, that really hadn't been done. And so for me, it was, it was about co training. Yeah. Right. You no, know, training and coaching, they kind of go hand in hand nowadays. Mm -hmm. But back then, you know, 99, 2000, there was no training industry. Yeah. There was a few guys that were doing it. But that was my motivation, you know, really to help high school kids. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start, you know, working with some high school kids because I saw a lot of kids have a lot of confidence issues. Yeah. And you know, you, know, yeah. a, you can have a coach that can build you up or you can have a coach that can tear you down. That's a fact. And for me, it was more about – you know, how can I get into this industry and help young athletes mm -hmm. just build confidence more than anything? And that just it just kind of morphed yeah. into a business for me. You know, I wasn't even expecting to train um, what well, I would say NBA athletes. It was mm -hmm. more about the high school kids. And it just just kind of took a life of its own. And it was about a 13 year journey, man. And mm -hmm. Mike Brown, um, you know, he hit me up about the job. You know, I had, at that point, I had worked with a lot of NBA players. I worked with a lot of college kids, high school kids. And Mike hit me with the opportunity. And I had to ponder on it for a while. Yeah. Because I was running my own business. You know, I work when I want, travel when I want. You know, I was on my own clock, on my own dime. And I kind of got used to that. But I was also in, in a mindset of, you know, I wanted to test my own skill set, mm -hmm. you know, as a trainer. And so when the opportunity came for me to, to be a part of Mike Brown's staff with the Lakers in 2011, Kobe was a big part of that for me. Yeah. That was a big 
big part of it. And whether you know it or not, you were a big part of that. I wish we got e- to hook up. Even though you weren't on that team, yeah. there was two dynamic pieces for me that I was just like, man, you know, having the opportunity to to work with and train mm-hmm. athletes like this, yeah. it was going to push me, you know, for me to see if I really knew what I was doing. And that was the that was the real motivation behind it for me to take that job, that opportunity. Obviously, I didn't get a chance to work with you. Yeah. You know, but that was that was well, a big part of it. Not yeah, yet. Not yet. Huh? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. But yeah, you've you, like you said, you trained high school level, probably done college, you've done NBA, and you've trained guys like Kobe, LeBron, Kawhi, Kyrie. What do you think separates those guys like Kobe, Kyrie, uh, LeBron, Kawhi? Like, what's what separates them from everyone else? Well, I think the first thing is they're. They got a God-given talent. You know, they are they are physically gifted with some kind of natural ability, right? And then on top of that, their desire to work. There's levels to it. You know, there's there's levels to how guys work. Mm-hmm. You know it. You've seen it. There is there is actually a level of how guys commit themselves, and not just the work on the floor, but how you take care of your body. How do you eat? What do you do in the weight room? How do you sleep? Mm-hmm. There's this whole package of of how these guys approach their game from a mental standpoint and then the physical. You know, you move into the physical space, how much time do they spend on the floor yeah. working on their craft? Um, that's a, that's a, it's a big combination of a lot of things. It's not just one thing. Mm-hmm. The physical gifts that they're blessed with already, and then you, you add into the mix that they were unafraid of the work. I'll yeah. use that term. You know, unafraid of the work. They're unafraid to push themselves to the limits every day to see how great they could become. Guys that are, are that good, no matter how cocky that they, they are, the reason why they are that good is because they have a little bit of humility in them, and that little bit of humility in them is that they are working on their weaknesses all the time. So you got to see like guys like point. Kobe and um, Kyrie, where he's like, damn, what's, what's their weaknesses? You know right. what I'm saying? Cut one move off, they hit you with the next move. Cut that move off, they hit you with that move. Then the bucket. So, like, what are, yeah, well, what are things that, like, people don't see, like, with Kobe, LeBron, you play with Kobe, like, mm-hmm. what are things behind the scenes that no one sees that really, like, like what physically are they doing that sets themselves, themselves apart? Like, obviously, aside from God-given talent, but, like, I'm sure there's hours, like, Kobe in the gym, like, before everyone else, and just, like, really dedicating his life. Well, Kobe trained himself to, like, like Ali used to do, like, to be tired, to put himself in that, you know, wherever he needed to be. I don't know how the fuck he got there <laughs> because he hardly slept. But whatever he needed to do, like, to be tired, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know that story you got with uh, when he told you to be at the gym at a certain time and, like, you thought it was at night and it really meant, like, 5 in the morning. Like, Hey, man, that was an honest mistake, right? There. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was an honest mistake. But, you know, to L.O.'s point, man, I think that mindset of pushing yourself to – to exhaustion and mm-hmm. being able to operate in that space, right? That's a tough. <laughs> that's a tough space to be in, and most people are not comfortable. Mm-hmm. They're not comfortable being tired and really trying to go, you know, another step. Yeah. You know, it's it's a big thing. You talk about players like Kobe and and Bron, the KDs of the world, you know, Kawhi's, the the Kyrie's, Giannis. You think all these dudes, man? They've seen every coverage. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Their, their intellect, yeah. you know, people don't really talk about their intellect too. That's I mean, right. You, you remember how crazy? Cause, yeah, because, I mean, you take a player like uh, Tim Duncan, you know, like it was, uh, he was weak when he got double team in the post. But then later in his career, you see him when double team, boom, he just started to pick you apart. Had to figure it out. Yeah, figure all, it out, they man. They all figure it out. When you're elite like that, every team is going to try to figure out a way to stop you. Mm-hmm. So you're going to see – you're going to see multiple coverages. So their IQ is a big part of it, too, where people don't really talk about how smart they are no. and how much they study the game and, and they're prepared for their opponents on both sides of the ball. Yeah, because LeBron is like, he's like, I told you about this, like Einstein in basketball. <laughs> if you think about it, he took three rookie coaches to the NBA final. Yep. I don't even know his high school coach. <laughs> his high school coach is legendary. Is he? Yeah, man. If saying, you ask, huh? you ask Braun about his high school coach. Yeah, well, he had to be because he passed a lot of knowledge, and the uh, and the guard given, um, 
No, the other thing too is coachable. Yeah. People don't people don't give them enough credit. credit. And, and I'm, I'm all of them dudes, yourself yeah. included. Like I've I've learned as a coach that elite players they yeah, want to. I be know coached. some I know some dudes that's good enough to be in the NBA and like they were not coachable. And that's the that's reason a big why they never man. really hit that hit their stride. That's a big thing. It's a collaboration yeah. between coach and player. It's not one or the other. It's a true collaboration. That's you know, players have to be willing to listen to the coaches, and coaches have to be willing to listen to players as well. That part of it is is something again that people don't talk about: the collaboration of elite players and the expectation that they have from coaches. Yeah. Right? The game plan, the preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, what does our practices look like? All of that stuff. They want that. They want the structure. And I think where the disconnect comes is when they don't have that structure and they're not pushed from their coaches. So I've always found that elite players, man, they they want to be coached. And, and me as a coach, shit, I want to be pushed to be elite myself. So I'm, I want to accept that challenge from, from players at that level to where I can be, you know, be, be great myself every day. That's another thing I wanted to talk about because I know, like, you've, like we said, you've coached some of the greatest players ever. What are some of the things that they've actually taught you when you're there teaching them? Like, what have you learned from them? Man, I do more learning. I tell people all the time, I do more learning than teaching. And that's a great way for me to be con continue to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're working with elite athletes, there is something that's in them that's helped them get there, right? So my job is to figure out how to continue helping you be elite. Mm -hmm. How do you continue to improve your skills? So for me as a coach, my very first question to Kobe, to Bron, to Kyrie, to Kawhi, to any of these guys is, how can I help you? What areas of your game do you want to improve? That's my very first question to those guys <clears throat> because they're already at a point of, you know, they have their own self-motivation, yeah. right? They work on their game. They know what they like. But there's an element of they all have this mindset of, I, mean, I have to improve somewhere. And so my best asset as a coach is to figure out what that is and help them arrive at that point. And so anytime I step on the floor with athletes, I don't care if it's youth, I don't care if it's male, female, there's always something that the athletes teach you. Better way to communicate, better way to help them get better. You know, there's, there's always better ways to train. So it's just things that I'm always paying attention to, to the athlete, and they tell you things, whether it be verbal or through their body. Yeah. You know, there's always something that you can learn from, from athletes when you're on the floor with them. Are there any similarities you, you would say, like between LeBron and Kobe? A lot. There's a lot of similarities in how they approach the game. You know, I think if you talk to LeBron, his time with Kobe on that Olympic team, right. and they talk about that a lot. How he, he watched Kobe and, yeah. and learned some things about, man, okay, what does it, think, what does it take to stay on top like that? Mm -hmm. You know, being in the weight room. You know, what does he eat? How does he sleep? All of these things. There's a lot of similarities in the way Bron approaches every day. His weight room work, his court work, his, you know, watching film, and then just how he takes care of his body. Right. Well, I think the, 38. Sim the similarities in them is they're both winners, really. No question. On and off the court. Basketball. Right. Non-basketball. So what do winners do? How do winners live? How do winners think? Plus they both have a common. Different players, different work of body, you know, body of work as, as an athlete. But their approach to the game, like, you know, like L.O. said, man, there's, there is a formula to it. And – some people are willing to do it and some aren't. I mean, we see LeBron, 38 years old, and the, the way he carries himself, his body, his conditioning, and, like, clearly it's not like it's happening by luck or chance. Like, he's putting in the physical work. And I, I also want to speak about the mental side, both of you guys, player, coach, also player. But, like, how big and important is the mental side of the game, it's, it's, especially the bubble, like literally being trapped in a bubble and winning a championship. Like, yeah. what is that mental side of the game? Yeah, I want to see, but it's crazy because it's too bad that um, that bubble team is not together. Hmm. Because I guess in the bubble, I don't know how it was formed, but y'all were like in each other's face all the time. Right. All y'all had was each other. Mm -hmm. So y'all had the bond in that time. So obviously y'all was the best team on the court and probably socially as a team because you had to really bond. So that was a good look just for the whole L.A. 
the look of it. Man, you know what they did, although they, they spent a lot of time. So the way they had it set up, you know, we were in a big hotel, <clears throat> and every team had their own floor, mm-hmm. pretty much the whole floor for your teams. Our guys, man, they were – them dudes played Madden 24-7. Mm-hmm. Video games. I mean, all they, right. had, they had a league. They had competition. <laughs> I remember I was talking so to Quinn about that. They, you know, they had an escape to yeah. – once we got off the court that they – they found another way to bond, mm-hmm. you know, just just through that game, and they spent a lot of time together yeah. in that space. I think more importantly in the bubble, though, Rondo, man, you know his his approach, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use him as an example. But that whole team, they went into the bubble with the mindset of what are we here for? Yeah, and I had always said that the team with the, the toughest mental fortitude is gonna win in the bubble. That's yeah. what it was all about. And so they they were all on that page. And Rondo, man, specifically, he was locked in. Yeah. Like, when Rondo broke his hand mm-hmm. and he missed, like, I don't know, the first three, four weeks of the bubble, he was in our coaches' meetings on mm-hmm. Zoom. He was just, man, how can, I, how can I still have an impact? What way can I help the team and, and be, you know, I want to learn what you guys are doing. And his voice, his basketball acumen, his IQ was really important. To help in the mental side of, of what we did, and it was just really, man. Those dudes understood that they were there for one reason, one reason only, and that was to try to win a championship. I mean, you were part of three championship teams, and I kind of want to ask if there are any similarities you see between those three, and then if there are any between those three and our current team right now. Man, LO brought up something about that team that we had in 2020. I think that team had, I think, every piece that you can think of a team needs. You had active bigs mm-hmm. between JaVale and Dwight. That combination, them two, they were, they were one. Yeah, rim protectors. Man, they were, they were just one hell of a big, you know, because. And dirty when, bucket getters. And when one stepped off the floor, mm-hmm. the other one stepped in and filled a role. You know, you had Danny Green, who was, you know, a 6'6", six, six, you know, 3 and D shooter. KCP. Another defender, mm-hmm. Alice Caruso. Another defender. You had Rondo. You mm-hmm. know, intelligence. You had Bron. You had AD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, AD you, left you know, AD you, had you had Markeith right. Morris. You know, we had we had so many pieces. You had Jr. You had D. there was so many different pieces to that team. Everybody filled a role. I think that's what every championship team has to have. You have to have elite players, and then you got yeah, that team. A kick this team's ass if you actually oh, yeah, out. Easy, if LeBron got to sit out and sit down and watch them teams. Easy. Play? I mean, also like not like like with Kobe passing, like they all went through that together. You know, the yeah. games canceled yeah, and just being together. A lot, of, a lot of things tied into that, man. But the uh, the team was really good. You know, I think Frank Vogel did a great job of having a plan, and our staff of just how do we utilize everybody on this team and 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 let them be at their strength. You know. I, Championship teams are you have to have closers. Mm-hmm. You got to have a closer. You know you have to have somebody that's really elite that you could just put the ball in their hand and say go make a play. Mm-hmm. And no matter what Need we draw, bucket, just yeah. go make Even a play. For you or somebody else. So you have to have that, and then the supporting cast around them. You have to have players around the elite guys that know how to play. They, they know gotta, their role. They got to buy in. Right. Know their role. You know. So the similarities between you know the teams that we had in Cleveland. You know, you had Kyrie, you had Kevin Love, you had Braun. And then you had the J.R. Smiths, the Iman mm-hmm. Shumpers, the, all the other Richard Jeffersons, the Channing Fries, all the other pieces around those guys that were just high-level role players. Same thing in Toronto. You had Kawhi, you had Kyle, Kyle Lowry, and then you could take your pick. Yeah, Fred yeah. Van Fleet, mm-hmm. Norman Powell, yeah. Serge Ibaka, Mark Gasol. Pas, you know, Pascal, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, OG. When you, when you name off a championship team, no, you're you be thinking that they like, but then you start naming them. And like you see the pieces. Toronto, yeah. The similarities are there. You got elite players, and then the role players are just elite. I mean, and then you take the team that we have. We just talked about all of those guys. So those are the similarities that I saw. Right. And the biggest thing is, like L.O. said, is the buy-in. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you're always going to have ups and downs through the season. You know, guys are not happy about playing time or shots or whatever. That's normal. But when it comes winning time, yeah. everybody gets on the same page and they understand They understand what it's about. Yeah, I think it's incredible how Russ has fit in so well coming off the bench. Like, no one would have thought he would come off the bench and boom, as soon as he starts coming off the bench, he's going crazy. 
And like the crowd, like the fans, like from a fan standpoint, being at every game, from them going to booing him, and then he steps on the floor and goes nuts. Like I think it's incredible. And, and I want to speak about that, that buy-in factor and the trust that you were just speaking about. And also you, when you were playing, like you won a, you won a couple of championships. Like, well, yeah, just like Russ, I was, you know, I um, gave into being uh, coming off the bench and I was about to be a fucking free agent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to take money out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking come off the bench. But I love my team, you know what I mean? I, I love my city, I ain't wanna go nowhere. So I made a decision, it led to two championships. Hopefully, Russ come off the bench. Hopefully, we can fucking just make the playoffs. What you think about that, Phil? We can make the playoffs? Oh, for sure. Huh? No I, I know, y'all. No question. Because I know hopefully when, when Braun, when God James started getting closer to the scoring title, hopefully that'll spark the team up a little bit. Health is it's all about health. Like you said, health yeah. is everything. Right the whole have, thing. Have health, man. You, you don't always have... Uh, you don't always have a star-studded team. Yeah. Like I said, I go back to the roles, mm -hmm. role players, and, and everybody um, buying into the roles that are, that are in front of them. You don't do that, you don't have a chance to win. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to be on the same page, and you got to be healthy. You got to take a little bit of luck. You know, we, last couple of years, we haven't had either one. Mm -hmm. you know, we had a lot of injuries, um, a lot of bad luck, but that's just part of the game. Mm -hmm. That's part of it, man. You just you got it comes with the it comes with the uh, with the territory. You just you try to put yourself in the best position to win games as possible. And, th and those guys that are the next guys up, right? You know they have to do their work to where they can stay ready. You know that's what that's the phrase of staying ready for I mean, when they the game got the, gets got called. the perfect dude around them to keep them ready. Well, you know I don't do it by myself, man. We got no. a great staff. Yeah. We got a great staff of guys that that love to work. They bring energy every day. And you know it's always. It's always something where you don't really see what goes on behind the scenes. That's a fact. Right? You see the wins and losses or mm -hmm. you see what happens on the floor, but people don't always get to see what goes on behind the scenes and the daily work. Yeah. And then just the mixing. You know, some days we come in as coaches, man, we don't we don't know who's playing. Yeah. You know, so you gotta figure out, all right, well, somebody this guy's hurt today, that guy's right. hurt. Okay, on to the next. Yeah. You know, we gotta try to fill in the gaps and do the best you can. You know, and everybody has to stay ready. Who's the trainer? On as far Lakers. as on the Lakers, who's the trainer? I know Gary Vitti was the trainer. Gary Vitti, that's my brother. But who's, <laughs> who's uh, the trainer now? Roger Sancho is Roger Sancho, head trainer. Roger's got he's got some rings under his belt too. Yeah, he was with the Warriors for a long time. Okay, um, so he's got some he got championship pedigree. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's a collective effort, man. Everybody in that building he shows up every day trying yeah. to do the best they can. I hear that. We got to talk about LeBron real quick. He's about a, he's about a, you know, obviously past Kareem, and I wanted to ask both of you guys, do you think? Guess. Go ahead. <laughs> Say. <it. laughs> if they retire his number, if you no, 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 we're not there yet. <laughs> My question is, no. do you think LeBron passing Kareem will be the greatest NBA? The, the greatest moment in NBA history. Just or, think, of, just think about him? it. Or I mean, just in general. That's a tough question. Greatest moment in NBA history? I mean. We thought that was untouchable. One of. As a fan? It'll be one of. From watching it? From me watching the NBA since you I was like You call him God James, six? so I mean, that would be. I don't know any moment. That would be bigger than yeah, no, I mean, catch, catch and catch. Some people are different. Everybody's got a different opinion. LL. Right. That's definitely going to be, you know look, I mean? man, that's, a, that's the pinnacle. That's definitely going to be. Just, I mean, that's a lot to put on a player, but. That's a lot of buckets, bro. The fact that he's not even a, a, a no, score for his uh, guy. They said it the other night, you know, 38,000 points. That's a lot of buckets, And man. his best attribute is he do this. Mm -hmm. he give it up. Well, that's what they've always said. He's not a scorer. Shit me. <laughs> just a basketball player, yeah, bro. Yeah, well, you're right. That is um that's a good question, man. That is that's gonna be one of the one of the best moments in NBA history for sure. I don't think anybody really ever thought that Kareem's record would be broken. You know. At, at uh, least even, when I was when I was even up, the greatest ones, like the even the greatest bucket games. When MJ retired, I was like, all right, well yeah. I don't, it's over I now. I don't know. There's nobody chasing it. You know, and man, come on. 
LeBron's body of work is what it is. Longevity. But I, I would be surprised. God James? That's what he called him. He called him God, God James. God James? That's what God he called James. Years, playing at the way he's playing in year 20? I'm going to go. I'm going to tell him myself. I think I'm going to go. What's the name, man? Shit, Huh? <laughs> no, nah, I was not. <laughs> well, you, I, you're going to be there, right? Hell yeah. I'm a, Wherever I'm a, it is, I already told like you. a groupie for the next. <laughs> when you start getting closing in, I'm going to turn into like the God James groupie. I'm going to start popping up with God I James. I'm with you, bro. I'm with sign you. Sign this. Sign my text, bro. James. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but not for real. Nah, that's going to be a special moment, man, to be, uh, you know, to be able to sit there and witness that. That's a... Uh, who knows when it'll happen again? Never. Comes down to just being. No, every every record is broken to be broken. At some again. point. You know what I'm saying? It's broken to be broken, but it's going to take a long time. And it's going to take the. See, I don't know if, like. See, like. The key to it, LO, is the longevity you said. That's it. What yeah, longevity, but, like, Kobe, he didn't have to say it. You knew it. Through his play, who he was trying to chase. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know if a kid coming up is gonna have the spirit and the game enough to be like, yo, I'm trying to catch LeBron James <laughs> without being intimidated by it. You know top, what I'm saying? Top of the food chain, dog. It's probably like an eight year old kid, maybe like a. Who knows where you're at. Well, the key that you just said, though, man, the, the energy. Yeah, you got to have that and shit the, in your spirit. That, that's the God in you got to tell you. Game. You got to want to do that. That dude loves the game, dog. There's, there's no – if you ever watch, sometimes he'll post a story. He got six or seven TVs on, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all hoop. And he, he definitely loves the game, man, for sure. I want to get your thoughts on Wemben Yama because he's a freak. Like, just his height and Who? his skill set. Victor Wemben Yama. Oh, yeah, boy. He's going to be a problem. That's different. That's the L.A. look. You, <laughs> nah, you, already, you already know I know. Because, I got to because, see an eye test. Because the way. I got to see an eye test. That boy picked. You, come on, dog. The way you played, you was one of the first. Like, man, he's 7'4 with the geezer shooting it like Steph. <laughs> <laughs> he shoot it easy, too. Like I'm going to probably say the team that he get picked to is going to be a competitor really quick. I don't even want – It's for me, I haven't even really tried to put my mind on what this kid is going to be. As because a if he go to Oklahoma City. <laughs> with all that young talent Chad over and there. They got some young talent over there. Mm. And then where, well, who else is playing bad who got a chance to get him? Rockets. Houston Spurs. There's a few. And then if he go to with San Antonio, if he go with a pop, that's As a pro, that might be the best thing for him. <clears throat> but then if he go with, to Houston with Jalen Green and them, they running the gunner. His, his Whatever, whoever you add just, him to is be like, and the kid is just put a baby, you over man. the top. He's just a baby. So you start adding in the other elements of the weight room and figuring out his body and really figuring out his game. Yeah, you if know, he talk, stay if he stay injury free, he could be tough. It's a problem, man. If he don't if he don't get out there and break, and there's nothing. There's been nothing like that. That's different. That's like Lou Alcinda with the heat check. <laughs> That's Not different. Kareem. That's, That's Lou Alcinda with the heat. That with is the heat. generational talent right You there. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the biggest stars in the NBA have talked about it. Like, we've yeah, never you know, seen you, it before. It's one of those things, man. I hate the hype train because you sometimes just want athletes to be able to step into, step into their future yeah. and, just, and just blossom. I mean, yeah, you know, but it's, it, you know, he living with the time. We living is, with the time for sure. He, we are exposed to him for sure. You know what I'm saying? Ten years ago, we wouldn't even know who he was. Right, that's a fact. But we living in the world. That's a fact. But I tell you what, what, every time I see him play, he getting loose. He don't disappoint. Like the few games that I've seen, he come with it. He coming with it. It ain't like no eight and he fifteen. Getting, he nah. getting loose, man. You know, and I'm just like, all right, young fella. You don't know about that Bruce Lee strength. Yeah. Now, when you playing with aggression, that's what I'm saying. Like, if he got any type of nastiness with him, then it's, it's going to be tough. I think you have to, though. Yeah. You 7'4". Yeah. You know, Cass is always going to try to test your handle. Yeah, everything they, about They want to test everything at that size. So, every, mm-hmm. everything I've seen from the kid, man, is, is pointing in the right direction. 
We're going to finish it off. What we usually do is we'll do, like, some quick hitters and, like, short questions, short answer. Um, the first one I have for you is I asked Lamar this. What do you think is more impressive? We had Luca 60-20 and 10. And then we had Donovan 71-8 and 11. I forgot about that. How do you forget about the 71? Like, that's, like, different. 60 what? 20 and 10. Luca had 60, 20, and 10. They were down well, nine a, with 30 seconds I'm left. I'm a team first guy, so I'm going to take 60, 20, and 10 more than 71. And nine? Donovan 11 assists, 10 assists. Luca 24. L.O., you know, of all people, yeah. 60 is 60. Yeah. 40 is 40. Yeah. Once you stick, you know how hard it is. Yeah, I know. That's a you have to be a bucket. Uh, you have to be a bucket. And again, but once you get to, like the motherfuckers that's going yeah, fifty, and, like once you get there, you blanking out. You shooting the ball. You ain't even he's really. Going in, bro. You I mean, ain't even thinking. As a player having to guard that dude. As a team having to having to try to scheme for that. Once you get to once you get to forty. But listen, okay, this is what I'm saying. A, a good coach. I think coaches get caught up in the game. Oh, no doubt. No, because no question. when I know the killer being is, of course, I was with him, feel me? That game that we played. What's the 81? The yeah. The Toronto game? Yeah. Who was the coach? Mitchell. We played for Indiana. Was it? Was it Sam Mitchell? Yes. I'm sitting there the whole time like, yo, when the fuck you going to double team? I want to play too. <laughs> like, I'm just sitting here watching. This motherfucker ain't making no switches. You ain't going to no zone, no nothing. Hey, maybe, maybe, dog. Maybe. <laughs> so he deserved to be at right where he at in the booth right now. Get him off the sideline. You ain't switch no nothing. I wanted to play too. Just watch me, 81. <laughs> God bless but like man. what's like what's going through your mind? Like you're there and Kobe's having one of the greatest scoring performances in NBA history. Like what like what's going through your mind as it's happening? Get him the ball. Set a pick. Free him up. I want him to get a hundred. Right. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Like, the basket looked that big. Yeah. It right. might have looked bigger. Probably was bigger. And he, it was crazy about the game. Like I'm, it wasn't like he wasn't hitting shit behind his back or over his neck. No crazy, just his the will. Just a bucket? Yeah. Nah, man, I, it's impressive. It's impressive, like with Donovan, Donovan Dunn, his uh, that move for him to Cleveland has been has been a great move for him. I love organization. It. But him and Luca, man, watching those. Fuck Utah. I you, don't. You start getting <laughs> up into. I got a little. When I think about some of them places, what I happened play, with I them? Like, I know. I know Boston shook your bus. Ooh. You know that, right? Boston, uh, Phil. Boston actually shook his bus. Like the oh, was that 2010? No, nah, 2008. When they Bro, beat they us were shaking like the team bus. Yeah, they won't let us leave. They started shaking our bus. <laughs> hey, bro, you know the finals, man. Yeah. You get an edge any way you can, bro. We, <laughs> hey, listen, when we but was nah, in Toronto, you... hold on. <laughs> when I was coaching in Toronto, the fans would be outside of Golden State Hotel 2, 3, 4 in the morning. <laughs> not letting them sleep. Going nuts. <laughs> y'all not getting no sleep. They was out there. Hold like, up. When y'all was, was playing in Golden Toronto, State? In Toronto. Oh. We played Golden State in the finals, dog. The fans, the fans was yeah. outside the hotel. Like, well, I'm telling you. Y'all ain't getting no sleep. <laughs> there will fans be no sleeping. are short for fanatic. For sure. Fuck Psycho. Utah. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck Phoenix, huh? No, seriously. Those must have been some of your tough series. Yeah, no, it was. But I don't like the way. You know, like, you could say, fuck me or fuck you. And, you know what I mean? But don't try to like So fans back demasculate then are are fans back then worse than they are today? I would say yeah. More loyal? To their team, hell yeah. Rem okay, I'll give you an example. Remember that um Remember that photo shoot that was questionable, like the all white photo shoot mm. that Kobe did? Mm-hmm. We get to Utah. These niggas got that shit on every. <laughs> <laughs> they did their homework, dog. They did their homework, man. They ready on every fucking seat. Every advantage they can get. And then on one occasion in Utah, 
This motherfucker had a blow up doll <laughs> and a French made outfit. <laughs> And it had a sign around his neck that said, no means no. Mm. Yeah, they went there. That's not even funny. I was like, yo, yeah, I got to get that taken That's down. crazy. Hey, fans do their research, man. That's going to go too far. They do. They do their research. And I'm not mad at them, but fan is short for fanatic, for, right? For, that's a fact. And I respect that. Because they're just fans. They're not going to get fined. They're not yeah. going to get like kicked out of the league. But like I think it's like, is there, like, uh, is there a fine line? I think so. That's crazy. I didn't know that's crazy. I would think so. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. In human decency, I would think so. We're all God's children. Continuing with the quick hitters. This one's for uh, Phil. Your favorite Kobe story. Oh, man. I tell you, I didn't spend as much time as L.O. did with him, but it was something different every day with that dude. I was, uh, <laughs> he was explaining to somebody one time about what it means to be a shooting guard. And it might have been Jody Meeks. It was a conversation, and uh, it was talking about passing the ball. And the conversation went a few different ways. But at the end of the conversation, Cole was like, I am a shooting guard. <laughs> I shoot <laughs> the ball and I guard. <laughs> there is no passing involved in that. Shooting guard. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. And he was. He you was, know what's so crazy? Most people, don't even, most people don't even think about that. They say he, shooting guard. He said, the I guard shoot. The guard that's supposed to shoot. The and shooting I guard. guard. I never it. even thought about that. Shoot <laughs> and guard. That was supposed to do with the shooting guard. It was. Uh, it, man, there's so many of them. You know. Yeah. You know how to do it. it said, so he was, we were on the bus one day. We was like. So after the game, he was like, Yo, I'm better than Mike. I was like, Word? I'm going to eat that and let that chill, but I don't think you're better than Mike Bean. I love you, but. And it was just you, right? You, no one else heard that? No, nah, nobody heard that. And hey, what was his response to you? <laughs> no, he's like, Wait, do it again. Huh? Nobody. People. <laughs> yeah, like, that fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. Oh, man. Next. And this one is, I want, I want Lamar to answer this one first. Does LeBron, or does God James deserve? God James? Does LeBron deserve to have his jersey retired as a Laker? The fans want to hear this one. I would say because he's getting a, he going to um, catch cat. And, catch and he got magic. Yeah? I'm going to say yeah. Right now. Like, let's say nothing. Like, well, at, no, after he catch Cap, he, what he was well, going to do? No, I'm saying like championship-wise. He's got a no, final. No, he's getting it for LeBron the, the James to, to play and his impact on the Lakers in a short period of time. I don't think no player in Laker history besides Magic Johnson impacted the Lakers, impacted the Lakers in such a short period of time as, Le, as LeBron James did. Maybe, maybe Kareem. You know what I mean? This what, his fifth year? LeBron's? That's liquor? Yeah. Yep. Fifth year. I've been here for four. Feel longer than that, right? Gave us a couple of flicks, a couple of movies in, championship. Did the real LA thing. You we, feel me? <laughs> I'm, I'm, we I still got at least it. one more in him. I could dig it. Probably two more. Yeah, that jersey would be in the Raptors. 100%. One, this is for Phil. What is one current player? that you want to coach, and then one past player you wish you would have gotten the chance to coach? Uh, current players, I can't say that there's there's any. You know, I live in the present, man. I'm right here. I'm a Laker. I'm coaching the dudes that's in my uniform. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. That's how I am. Now, the one dude that I did want to coach. You feel me? This dude right here sitting next to me. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't going to even – I ain't gonna even hold you. We'd have shook their ass show. up, Phil. No, like seriously, so I, close to me too. That was one mm -hmm. of the things that when I took the Laker job, I had wrote some notes yeah. and just talking about players and man, and your size, Elo, and mm -hmm. your skill set, the way you played, yeah. like being a complete player. We'd have shook their ass up, man. I told Mike Brown, and Mike Brown even said it. I don't know if he ever told you this, but you were one of the main reasons why he took the job. And I spoke to him. That's dumb. 
right before the trade stopped, right before it happened, I spoke to him. And that was like, that was a big thing for me, man. Like I, I was always a guy who wanted to, to coach players and work with players that can do multiple things. Because once you sharpen your skills in, in three or four different areas, what they gonna do with you? Nothing. <laughs> Call for help. Let <laughs> me help. For sure. Next, Nicole, we got four more. Which player made you most proud of the progress they made under you? And I, and I also I want to hear about Chrissy because we spoke about it a little before we shot the pod. But, um, you know, that's a tricky question for me. I've always been a coach that because I was a former player and I knew how much work you had to put in. Like, again, the, the word collaboration for me has always been truthful. I've never been a guy that's tried to take credit for what players do. Like, yes, I'd be in the gym, I help them, but you got to do the work. Mm. You, have to, you have to be committed to that process. But I will say that, um, man, me and Kyrie are like, we are like thicker than, thicker than thieves. My time with him, man, to see him, his development, but Cole also played a big part in that, mm -hmm. that relationship. Yeah. You know, when I got to Cleveland, Cole was very open about building a relationship with him and mm -hmm. taking him in. But just to see Kyrie's development in his own space, his own mental, his ability to tap into his own, you know, understanding of how much work I have to put in, it was a big, it was a lot of growth for him because Kai was just a kid. He just liked to hoop. Yeah, he just, but he, he probably just, a, just been nice. He was a hooper. Like, he, but when I first got to Cleveland, that was the first thing he said to me, like, Coach, man, I just like to hoop. Yeah. I don't really work on my game like yeah. that. But the transformation, mm -hmm. seeing him take that leap, man, and really understand the value of, of working on his game and getting in the weight room to prevent yeah. his injuries, I was really happy, man, to see him take that trajectory. And, you know, to this day, I think he, that's still what – what he lives by. Because he's fucking work. him up out there. The work he Just does. He's a hooper. Man. He's a bucket. Can't nobody stay in front of him. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Hey, man, I took a lot of flack for a comment that I made. Okay. And I'm going to say it here on this podcast again. What's that? I said, and I want people to understand, I said, if Kyrie was 6'6", six, six, you would be looking at somewhat of a mirror of Kobe. Yeah, because the footwork, his skill set, yeah, all that left hand, about right hand, the mentality, or the, yeah, the right his footwork, set. all that left angles. Bruh, understand the angles. If Kyrie that. was six six, it would be a problem. Mm -hmm. I can see I, that you, finishing. I, you ask anybody right. in this league if they want to see that man at six six. Nah. Understanding his opponent and all that type of shit. No, sir. What is the best advice you've ever received? Ooh, I had a lot of good advice, man. My days coming up, my 52 years on this earth. My father was very old school, and he was very much into control what you can control. My dad really instilled that in me at an early age of just understanding your work ethic is one thing that you can control every day, no matter how you feel. You can decide to get up and do your work. And so that's always kind of lived with me. You know, my work ethic has always been really at a high level as a player, as a coach. Um, so I, I live by that. You know, and Cole also gave me some great advice too. Stop caring about what people think about you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I've had a lot of great advice, man, but those, those two things have, have really stuck with me, you know, for, for a long time, you know, as a young adult coming up and then as a, as a grown man. Two more questions. Who are the top three most underrated players ever for both of you guys? Underrated? We always talk about the best players of all time. Who are the most underrated, like guys who have been in the league, who have been coaches, like around these guys and see, not not just analysts? Who underrated? My God. I know Lamar says Zebo. Yeah, Zach Randolph, without a doubt, for me. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Um We finished off one of the podcasts. You're like, yo, I need some time to think on that. You didn't even have an what, answer. Underrated players? Yeah. I have two. I don't, I don't have three. I got two, though. Rod Strickland is number one. Yeah, Rod Strickland underrated. 100%. Rod Strickland. 
And then what the other one was, it didn't really get to mature. But Brandon Roy. Brandon Roy? Mm. He, was Boy, he was nasty. He used to go at Cole. He used yep. to try. He was nasty. He was I don't tough. think people really. He was he was funny. He was fundamentally sound. Yeah, Everything left right. A lot of people, I don't think people really, the really knew yeah. what kind of game he had. Six seven. Same with Rod Strickland. People didn't. He's a, Rod was a twenty and ten dude. Mm -hmm. Never made all like he was one of those guys that wasn't you know wasn't really picked for the All Star. It wasn't those two guys, man, are definitely at the top of my list. You know, throughout their careers, I'd have to think about the third one. Lamar. Uh, I would say Zebo. I would say Detlef Shrimp. I don't know if you know Ooh. who he was. Who? Detlef Shrimp. He don't even know who that I was is. born yeah. in 99. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Another player, Stacey Augman. I used to like Ooh. lefty. He was the the Detlef Shrimp one. Though, yeah. Huh? <laughs> he was skilled. Yeah. On like 6'11". 6'11". Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a nice one right there. Yeah. And then we can finish it off with your top five greatest all time. Doesn't need to be in order, but. All time? Because, because, because Phil, we, we just spoke about this with, with Matt Barnes. And Matt Barnes prefaced it with saying that most guys who don't have Kobe in their top five are guys like analysts, people who haven't really been in the game. And Kobe, I mean, Lamar had Kobe in his top five, but yeah. you'll notice a I lot of similar. sense. You'll notice a lot of th a lot of differences between analysts and players slash coaches. So, with that being said, like who? No order. It could be like yeah, who are your I mean, top I think five? The top five is, I really honestly think it's subjective because you got all kind of people that that'll put all kind of variants, and I don't think any of those will be wrong. Right. But for me, in no particular order, MJ, Bron, Kobe. That's where it gets subjective. That's exactly <laughs> where Matt stopped. That's where Matt stopped. Yeah, I'm telling you, because yeah, you could, you like, could go a like myriad it. of ways. Yeah. I could go Wilt. I could go Magic. I could He's, go you Kareem. said what? You yeah. said Shaq I go and uh, Larry. I could go Shaq. You said Shaq and Wilt, right? Yeah, you go Wilt, I Shaq. mean, there's a myriad of ways that you can go. That's why I said it's subjective. It's tough. I could go Akeem Olajuwon. You could you can go Tim Duncan. You can throw all kind of people in, people in there. Dominance. Or people got mad at you for not having Kareem in your top five. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say Kareem. Then but I agree with that. I mean, Will? Kareem is – look, Kareem would have to be in my top five, arguably just because of his stature. Yeah. He still holds that – he still holds that shrine right now. For now. Until, until mm -hmm. Brian Couple more weeks. <laughs> um, but, yeah, man, I that would – Mine's is um, Braun, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He said Bean. Being Matt Johnson. Hmm. And Matt was also like, yo, it can change. Like, it, can, it just changed. That's three Lakers. Which is crazy. <coughs> Which is crazy. That's just stuff that, you know, no fans Celtics, like to hear, you know. Celtics is, is got Russell and, and <laughs> I, Bird. They, I would have to. I they mean, trying Bird, to come Bird, 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 Bird was a be on, He had yeah. to be on that list, man. Bird was a motherfucker. I'm going to go play with Larry Bird. <laughs> Bird's a problem, and then then you need, you're not even talking about Shaq, you know. Yeah, Shaq. I mean, it's just right. That is it's a error. tricky it's question. So all depends on like error and all that. Type no of question. Shit. That's why I say, man, I, that top five, it could go, it can go any way. Yeah. It can go any way. At the end of the day, like this is what I've learned. You know, I'm only 23 now, but like when I was younger, I'd be like, yeah, Kobe's better than LeBron. Kobe's better than MJ. Blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, like right now, it's like. Appreciate greatness while it's here. It's yeah. hard to compare greatness. And the players themselves, they don't, they don't, they don't discuss this stuff. They're just like, yo, like we both their own our different thing. eras. Bro. Yeah, different eras and different players, right? I always kind of put it into different categories. To me, I think MJ is the fiercest competitor in my in my eyes. Like he's he's probably the fiercest competitor to put on shoes. Like I'm talking about from a sense of I get to the finals, I'm not losing. Yeah. I always looked at Kobe as, as being probably the, the most skilled. Yeah. yeah. The most skilled player. Yeah. Like skill wise, like just the most skilled. And then I always looked at Bron as like 
he's the best all-around player to ever put on shoes. Mm -hmm. Play one through five. Yeah. Those three different, those are three different things, right? Not to say that MJ is not skilled. MJ was super skilled, but I think his tenacity in here and in here, his will to win, it was just dominant. And then Kobe was just, well, let me take with MJ. Okay. Let me throw a little flair to it and put something on it. His skill package was just – so that's how I kind of broke those man. three dudes down, man. Just – I've always kind of put them in their own – in their own window. Yeah. Three different – three different players, man, in different eras, man. And they all served the game at a high level. Phil, we appreciate it. That was Love. probably our best episode. Appreciate you, bro. Love. When you when you get that head coaching job, you gotta look me up. Yeah, you Hell say you want to coach, yeah. bro. Facts. You say you want to put it on notice. Lamar Odom. Facts. Wants to get into the coaching world. That's a whole Let's fact. Let's get you there, dog. That's a wrap. Cool. See you on the next one.